The Goat House is back, recapping every single NFL Week 11 game and giving each team a grade based off their performance for the week here every Monday night with this video. Let's take a look at the grades for this week. Thursday night football, the Eagles beat the Commanders with a great fourth quarter performance. Win 26 to 18. I'm going to give the Eagles a B and the Commanders a C. And you could say, yeah, the Commanders had it for most this game. I, you know, I still felt like, felt like I was watching two teams that were more of defensive teams, which really shouldn't be the case. But the Commanders really couldn't do anything on offense. The Eagles had a very explosive offensive outing at the end of this game when it matters most. And the, again, the Commanders, most of this game was all defense, but even the defense collapsed at the end. They could not stop Barkley. They could not stop the run. So even though for the most part the defense played well and for the most part they had control of this game, didn't really matter in the end. Give them a C for those reasons. And the Eagles, yeah, I mean, they got to get a better grade. I mean, the defense gets an A or an A+, plus, but to get a better grade, the offense got to do more throughout this game. It was non-existent pretty much. I mean, the first drive, they get some big plays to A.J. Brown. have no, nothing in points to show for it then. And, uh, yeah, just didn't really get going until the end there, but... Very impressed with the Eagles' defense. They're going to get a B for this week. The Commanders get a C. Packers beat the Bears by one, 20-19, and somewhat of a thriller there coming down in the end with a blocked field goal. I thought these teams were pretty even. I mean, the score shows it. The way the game ended shows it. But if you look at how these two teams played on both sides of the ball, they were fairly even. I give them both a B-. minus. The big positive here is when these offenses absolutely needed to move the ball and get some points. They did that. Perfect world. They could have been a little better in the red zone. You know, felt like the way they were moving the ball, there should have been more points scored. Um, Love was playing good up, you know, and then had that that bad giveaway, that bad interception. You know, otherwise they, it could have been a little easier for the Packers. Defensively, the Bears' defense is usually outstanding, and they weren't awful in this game. But they're they're struggling to stop the run right now, or especially lately too. Looking even at that Cardinals game a couple weeks ago. So that was odd. You know, they finally got to positive. Caleb Williams played well. He was using his legs more. They got some offense going. They were somewhat explosive. You want them to finish a little bit more. Maybe they had the game plan factor in their favor because they switched some things. The new offense coordinator, so the Packers really did not know what was happening. Uh, yeah, again, perfect world. Execute drives, finish drives, I mean, and, and score more points. Uh, but, yeah, both teams felt like a B- minus this week in where the Packers Barely squeaked by the Chicago Bears. A big old snot pounding in Detroit. 52-6. to six. The Lions romp the Jags. Easiest grades I've ever had to do. The Lions get an A+. Plus with this dominating outing. Getting everyone involved. Both sides of the ball. Look elite. Fantastic. Look like a juggernaut team. That's not going to slip up again. And the Jags did an F. F stands for fire everyone. And I'm recording this earlier in the day. I don't upload it until after the Monday night game goes. And I record the Monday night thing. But So maybe the Jags, by the time this video is going up, fired at least Doug Peterson. I'm expecting it. Fire at least Doug Peterson. Probably more. Balky's got it. Balky's got to go as well. Just brutal from the Jags. I know they're, they have an excuse. They're missing Lawrence. But, I mean, is there really an excuse? You just... You're such a poor team. This felt like a college football beat-up game. That's what it felt like. We don't get too many of these in the NFL. They should not happen. It happened here. A-plus for the Lions. F for fire everyone for the Jags. Vikings beat the Titans 23-13. to And this is, another, this is another tricky one to grade because... Yeah, it looks like an easy victory for the Vikings. The Titans only scored 13 points, but it actually felt like it was clear, could have been closer than that. I guess you could argue both sides, but if you didn't watch the game, there was an insane amount of penalties on the Tennessee Titans, a lot of bailouts for the Minnesota Vikings. As And I'm not saying they were all the wrong calls or they were all BS calls. There were a few soft ones in there for sure, but man, they, they came at the worst time for the Titans. You know, sack or sack fumble, a touchdown for the Titans, a third down stop for the Titans, and then boom, a bailout for the Vikings, whether they're the right calls or not. So the Vikings did kind of rely on those a little bit. So you could argue this game was a lot closer. The Titans played them a lot better than the score showed. At the same time, the Titans didn't have a whole lot going for them besides a few big splashy plays. I mean, the 98-yard touchdown from their own end was amazing. That felt like a one in I mean, a million is a little too much, but it, a rare, rare play. And if it wasn't for that, this game was probably long over. So Titans kind of stuck in the game because of that. So you could argue both sides of that, but I do think the Titans played better than what the score showed, what the 13 points show. Um, at the, so I thought about giving them better than a C, but I couldn't give them worse than a C because you know they played decent. I thought Will Levis played his best game of this year, which was a little surprising going against the Vikings defense. But at the same time, with all that being said, 
The Titans, again, kind of relied on a couple splash plays. Didn't really do enough at all on offense. They were allowing Levis to get sacked a bit in crucial moments. Defense, I mean, Darnold moved the ball. The Titans stopped the run pretty well. The Vikings stopped the run pretty well. Again, the Vikings did rely on some bailouts, but again, Darnold played well. They moved the ball. The, the defense still played really, really well. I don't know how they gave up that 98-yard touchdown. It was one slip up right there, but other than that, I mean, the defense still did their job. They played well. They held the Titans at 13. So I came up with a B for the Vikings, a C for the Titans, but a very, very weird game that, yeah, if it wasn't for some a lot of these penalties, this game could have been a very close game. The Titans could have won, but if it wasn't for like one slip up from the Vikings, they could have won an ass-beating fashion. So it was a very strange game. Dolphins beat the Raiders 34-19, to so it looked like an ass-beating. I don't really think that's how it was the whole game. The Raiders, I never really felt like the Raiders were going to win, or they had, even though it looked like by the score through most of the game they had a shot, I never really felt like that. The Dolphins did have control, and they pulled away, and they were the much better team. It was a little closer than what that score shows at the end there but at the same time I was happy with the Dolphins performance very explosive on offense they can do what they wanted they can run the ball they can throw the ball I mean how about Johnny Smith being big time but Achan going for over 100 uh, scrimmage yards to a playing well it's an explosive team obviously defense third downs they could have been a little better but they made plays when they needed to here they didn't you know Bowers they let that big play happen obviously uh, but they end up winning big. 34 points is pretty impressive. And the Raiders defense still kind of put could put up a fight here and there. 34-19. Uh, I give the Dolphins an A minus. Yeah, it was a, at times it felt like the Raiders were still in it, so that's probably why we put the we put the minus on the A there. The Raiders, it just really never felt like they actually were gonna win or had a shot like that. And they're just giving up too many points right now. The team is just not where they want it to be. Um talent wise on game day, but also with the with the energy and the focus, the team just does not have what it would have had at the end of last year. Rams beat the Patriots 28-22. I give the Rams a B. I mean, it was a little sketchy at first. They were struggling a little bit, and the Patriots kind of stuck in this game. But as the game went on, you kind of got the feeling that the Rams... You know, it didn't. It, it took a bit for us to get there, but it felt like the Rams were going to win this game, but the Patriots were sticking in it, right? I thought Stafford played really, really well. I mean, Puka and, and Cup, Puka Cup, we'll call them. Um, the, the duo there, I thought was fantastic. You know, again, it, it's somewhat similar to the Seahawks game where, where there was a stretch of offense and it was a stretch, or I should say a stretch of defense and then a stretch of offense. Can we get them playing at the same time? That's kind of really the only knock there, but I was thrilled with Stafford and his couple of receivers. Uh, the Patriots, they put up a good fight with the Rams. They were sticking in it. It felt like an interesting game early on. And, and again, they were sticking in it. I thought Drake May played his best game as a, a professional quarterback yet. So really excited about him. He's very clutch, especially in crucial downs, you know, third downs. And that's kind of what he was at North Carolina as well. So give the Rams a B and the Patriots a C plus. It felt like two decent teams going out. The Patriots might be better than their record. Browns and Saints, 35 to 14. This game was closer than what the score showed. It didn't, you know, the score shows an ass beating. Was it really an ass beating? I guess you can argue the Saints really pulled away and, and they outplayed the Browns, but it felt like, yeah, the Browns were in it. They're going to come back. They tie the game. It felt like they had the advantage. They might pull it off, but then no. And it was just big plays to Taysom Hill, multiple to Taysom Hill, and big play to MVS. So the Saints, yeah, you know, did rely on those big plays, but they played a really solid ball game on both sides of the ball. Really, they were uh, explosive on offense, and they, for the most part, stopped the Browns on defense. You know, Darren Rizzi kind of got the team fired. He looks fired up, but he's got the team fired up and ready to play here. So, um, once again, in a two-game winning streak here. So, yeah, the Saints get an A-. minus. The Browns, yeah, felt like they were tough one to gray because it felt like they were in it more than the score showed, but just not enough. Weren't able to run the ball like we all expected them to, and just, just not in the defense. The defense is usually good, and the Saints are without their two best receivers, and they just had no answer for Taysom Hill, and they let MVS beat him up too, which I just did not expect to happen. It didn't help that Denzel Ward went down, but it's just, it's just a very disappointing outing for the defense. You know, it, once again, like last year, I feel like the defense, the difference home and away is pretty significant. So A minus for the Saints, D for the Browns. Colts and Jets, an absolute thriller. The Colts win by one point, 28-27, coming down to the wire. And I'm going to give the Colts a B and the Jets a C plus. And you could say, should they be a little closer? It is close. Should they be a little closer? Because it did take to the last second for the Colts to win. I felt like the Colts were the better team in this game, though. I, I did. Rodgers was underwhelming in this game. Thought he'd be able to do a lot more. They kind of relied on Brees Hall, and Brees Hall was a problem for the Colts. 
really was a problem for the Colts. End of the first half and then, you know, in the second half there. But the Jets were struggling to even get a first down for a big stretch of this game leading, you know, towards the end where Brees Hall kind of bailed them out, um, you know, t- towards the end of the first half, I should say. Um, you know, and the defense is underwhelming. They let the Colts, you know, Anthony Richardson had his best game of his career. They let him throw on him. They let him run on him. Let Pierce, A.D. Mitchell get loose. Josh Downs, all these guys get, get loose on them. You know, and it just, it just, Anthony Richardson was the better quarterback in this game. It's crazy going against AR versus AR here. Uh, Hall of Famer, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. It's pretty cra- crazy. And the Colts receivers were better. You know, then the Jets, the Colts offense line was better. You go down the list here, and the, neither defense was great, but, and that's the difference between the B and the C. Plus. I kind of wanted to give the Colts an even better grade because I loved how Anthony Richardson played. I love how the offense played, but the defense was pretty, pretty poor down the stretch. Was he stopping Brees Hall? Um, and it did kind of take to the very end to win this, close to the very end to win this game. But I was very happy with Anthony Richardson in this game. Expected a good game from him, and he uh, he uh, did that. I think and some just had the one bad play, which holding on the ball when the pressure was coming straight at him, and then he fumbled it, obviously. And I think if it wasn't for that, the Colts probably would have would have won a little easier, probably. Uh, just more proof of the Colts felt like they outplayed the Jets in this game. Ravens and Steelers, way more of a defensive game than than maybe some expected, even though it typically is when these two teams play. 18-16, a close game, kind of came down, it did, came down to a two-point conversion, so could you say, people will probably argue the grades here. Uh, Are they that separated when it came down to that? Uh, People will probably say, do the Steelers get a B-plus when they didn't even score a touchdown in this game? And I can understand that, why people would think that, but I did really feel like the Steelers outplayed the Ravens in this game. The Ravens were a little sloppy. Obviously, with the fumbles, you know, Russ had that bad interception, which a field goal would have been huge because the Ravens wouldn't have had a shot at the end there. So that was tough, but Steelers' defense looked elite. It took the last, you know, last seconds for the Ravens to go score, and you know, and Steelers' defense was trying still, so they can't give that up, but... Steelers defense was awesome in this game. The and the offense moved the ball. Yeah, perfect world score touchdowns, not field goals, but they played a really really solid game. They would have been in the A range if they could have scored some touchdowns. But yeah, I thought they were the better team in this game. They outplayed the Ravens here in Pittsburgh in, in a massive win for them to stay at the top of that big time division. So B plus for the Steelers, C plus for the Ravens. The Ravens, yeah, it's a little sloppy. Um, you know, they kind of rely on Derrick Henry. It feels like just going bonkers from the start. You know, they probably won one game where he hasn't done that. So uh, that's kind of the issue there with the offense. You know, the, and the defense finally picks it up, sort of. The Steelers move the ball still, but finally picks it up a little bit, at least in the red zone, but then the offense can't back him up. So tough one there for the Ravens. Very easy one to grade here. The Broncos shellacked the Falcons. Wasn't even close. Just my number one, you know, takeaway, like why they beat him up, what was the most evident in that game, just more physical. Just, just wanted it more too. Just way, in a way smoother. Everything was, especially on offense. It all looks the plays just look so smooth. How, how they were, how they were run, uh, led by Bo Nix, who played his best game of his young career. I mean, very happy with Bo Nix in this game. I love the way he gets out of the pocket and throws on the run. That's my favorite thing. But how he can use his legs, he looks really, really solid, really solid. So, but the the Broncos do the Bronc. I mean, just out physical the Falcons by a more than a mile and the defense looks legit top tier defense and the offense is adding on top of that so they are becoming a balanced team and balanced teams are scary and that is why the Falcons are struggling right now they're an offensive team where their offense didn't even show up in this game and their defense gives up plays on the through the air and a lot of plays on the ground that's a problem. That's a problem for a team that has a lot of talent. If you're not balanced, you're not as good as what your talent says. So it's a really good example of that in this game. The Broncos win 38-6, to so an A-plus and an F. Easy, easy one to grade here. Thriller, another thriller. Seahawks beat the Niners 20-17, coming down to the end. Geno has a clutch drive, even though he didn't have the greatest game. I didn't really feel, and yeah, both teams had explosive plays. You know, JSN had production, McCaffrey had production, Juwan Jennings getting going, I guess. But I felt like I was watching two average at best teams now what do i think of these teams in general i I think both are actually better in the record uh well at least will be better in the record going forward 
but you know, it's starting to become reality. The Niners just are not the same as I mean, we got to stop just kind of thinking, Oh, they're going to be fine. They're going to be perfect. It's going to be great. So we got to stop thinking that, but I still think they'll be better than what they are right now. But in this game, I didn't really feel like I was watching the two best to anywhere near the best teams here. So I gave the Seahawks a B minus the 49ers a C plus and 49ers would have held on. It probably would have been flipped there. But the Niners, yeah, special teams has been an issue. Defense has been a little inconsistent. I mean, both teams are almost the same, actually. It's like one second the offense is like, yeah, it's an explosive offense. The next second it's like, we're they can't get in the end zone. Like, what's going on? And there's a bad turnover. And, and it's kind of and not just this game. It's kind of the story of both these teams. And defensively, it's like one second it's like, all right, this is, is a defense. Like, we, they got ball players. They, sh- they got, you know, good coaching for the most part. They should be a good defense. And the next second it's not that great. You know, like how, how the Niners could give up that last drive to Geno Smith and the guys there. So, um, yeah, it wasn't really the greatest performances from these teams, but I get a little hyped about the Seahawks because, again, at, at time defense can win them games, offense can win them games. If you if they finally could put those together at the same time, they could be very sneaky. They could be very sneaky. Gino Gino's got to get be a little more consistent, but I give them a B minus, forty nine ers C plus. Forty nine ers extremely disappointing right now. Chiefs and Bills, yeah, I, I it it wasn't a free win or anything close to that for the bills. It actually was maybe a little closer in the score showed, but the bills outplayed the chiefs in this game. They, they were better in every category. I didn't think the chiefs played anywhere near their game and credit to the bills for that. So I give the bills an a and the chiefs a C plus for that one. I mean, Josh Allen was the better quarterback. They had the better running game. They had a better offensive line. I thought they had the, the bigger plays defensively. I thought they were better. The chiefs defense, um, yeah, I mean, it hasn't been the greatest the last couple weeks, and it was looked like one of the very, very best defenses in football before that. Uh, but it is only the first loss. We don't want to panic too much. But I thought the Bills were the much, much better team in this game, much more explosive, much more clutch. Josh Allen was the best player on the field in this game, and they figured it out. And they had some injuries too. Everybody has injuries, but they were missing some key guys in this game, and they figured it out against an undefeated team. So Bills get an A, Chiefs, Chiefs get a C plus. Sunday Night Football was an absolute thriller. I watched these two teams play, and I I, I was watching – it was an entertaining game, so I was watching that, but I was watching two good teams play. That's what I, I felt. Looking at the Bengals and the Ravens game last week, you remember me talking about that one? I, I wasn't really thrilled about those two, even though there was ex- crazy explosive star player plays. And there was some of that in this game too, but I wasn't really thrilled with how those teams looked. And, and it didn't, my, the feeling I got from that game was it wasn't the best teams. This felt actually like a heavyweight matchup, and that's why I'm saying like the Chargers, the question for them was, can they actually beat good teams? They're, you look at their schedule, their resume before this. I mean, it was a cakewalk. Not their fault, but it was a cakewalk, and they dominated a lot of those. And, and, and they've beat a good team. And people go, the Bengals are 4-7. and seven. True, it's not the best team in the world, but they're much better in their record. And you look at how these two teams are, how, how, what, how the feeling you get when you watch them. It felt like two really good teams. So I'm impressed that the Chargers are able to get that win, and they actually look dominant for a portion. That's why it was a little tricky giving the Bengals a B-plus in this game because there was a portion, a stretch in this game where the Chargers were just crushing them, crushing them. But fighting back like that, the offense was still explosive. They were still able to move the ball. Uh, even throughout that that stretch of um, getting beat up, they were able to move the ball. The defense was kind of letting them down. Just a couple plays that would just get the Chargers down there. Herbert scrambling. But look at the adjustments. They put a spy on Herbert. You know, so that... This defense still, even though the Chargers scored 34 points, the defense of the Bengals actually feels better. And, and I feel confident saying that better than it was earlier in the year. It doesn't mean it's good. No, it's definitely not good right now. But it does feel better. And we it shows they can adjust. The offense is so damn dynamic and explosive. Joe Burrow looks like the best of the best. And there's a couple other guys up there. But Jamar Chase looks like the, looks like the best uh, you know, of the best at that position right now. Just so explosive, and the defense. I, I, it might people might think it's funny because the 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 stretch of this game and the Chargers scoring thirty four, but the defense showing signs that they might be. Uh, it's probably not good enough to win anything major this year, obviously, but showing signs of being able to adjust and possibly getting better. And the Chargers, you know, Herbert playing awesome, and it was a little bit of a stretch in the second half where. Maybe the Bengals tweaked some things and made his job a little harder. But McConkey going off uh, when they finally gave Dobbins the ball, he was doing well. But the offense being explosive and the defense, I know, kind of went south later in this game as the Bengals adjusted. But uh, 
Man, the defense looked pretty damn stout for a stretch as well. I mean, there's a team that they, they show they can win with defense performance and offense performance. I thought these these were two. I don't know if they'll both be in the playoffs. or I mean, if one, you know, the Bengals is the question, will they get there because of record? But it felt like this felt like a playoff game. It felt like two playoff teams. So I was happy with it. I loved watching that game. Uh, so Chargers win 34-27. And if Bengals got to figure out the field goal kicking, I guess, as well. But A- minus for the Chargers, B- plus for the Bengals. Need more of those games. In Monday Night Football, a bit of an ass beating. The Texans win 34-10. to Honestly, it maybe felt a tiny bit closer. Not that it was close at all. And the final score show, I guess that's debatable. But just because the Texans at times, you know, the defense earlier in this game didn't look super great, but they end up clutching up in the red zone big time, obviously, holding the Cowboys just to 10 points. And... Stroud had some throws he would like back, uh, obviously, and the play calling was a little interesting at times. But at the end of the day, they dominate this game. Mixon was unbelievable on the ground. Uh, you know, honestly, if they gave him the ball more. They probably would have won by more. Would have been a little easier on the parts of the game. You know, through f- the first half, where it was close, it probably wouldn't have been that close, obviously. So, uh, but defense, they got after Cooper Rush. They rushed him well. They kept him out of the end zone. So, overall, they did dominate this game. Daniel Hunter was absolutely a electrifying in this game an elite performance from Daniel Hunter uh, who is one of the better pass rushers in football but in the Cowboys yeah they were kind of playing a little better than expected it kind of like the Texans underestimated them early in this game they were moving the ball but just couldn't execute uh, and Rush probably was fortunate he didn't have more turnovers you know a couple uh, quite a few dropped interceptions actually but I mean CeeDee Lamb had some explosive plays and then they Stingley was on him. Sometimes they had help over the top, and then they were f- limiting him a little bit. He still some had explosive pl- some explosive plays, but yeah, just the Cowboys look, felt like they were going to be able to do more as this game was going than really really could not. So o- only ten points, a little bit of a mess there, obviously. But a minus for the Texans, D for the Cowboys, and that wraps it up for this week's video here every Monday night, grading every single team, giving you a little bit of a recap as well. Next up, power rankings in our Week Twelve. Pick Sophia, join us, like, subscribe to Northkin Zion. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.